most important thing. Like what is the health status of uh, you, your coaches and your players? Well, thank you. Uh, appreciate you asking uh, right now. You know, we've uh, had some improvement health wise with uh, some of our staff members. Uh, you know, I had one guy from the staff uh, return, uh, another guy still out. Uh, we also have a couple of players have returned to practice, um, which was good to see. Um, we've also had some guys come out of quarantine. Uh, it was good to see some you know, beautiful faces, some smile on some guys' faces. Uh, Today, we're going to have a you know, hopefully a good practice and a healthy one, which is the most important thing at this moment. And uh, we'll see uh, when we get ready to get on the bus, uh, which guys would be available uh, for tomorrow's matchup versus Illinois. As I know you don't, you won't give specific players, but as, as far as numbers, maybe of guys who are actually sick versus just out because of, you know, protocols, close contact, thing like, things like that, where they're, I guess, can you share any numbers on, on guys who are actually, you know, feeling ill? Well, we have, uh, by the Big Ten standards, seven uh, players in order to be uh, available and active to play a game and one coach. So right now at this moment, uh, we have uh, seven players and one coach available. But you never know how, how, how it can change tomorrow. You just never know. Sure. You just got to, you know, put your head down. Uh, lay on the pillow, and before you lay on the pillow, you know, said a nice, beautiful prayer for everyone, which I love doing, and I think I feel it's the right thing out of my heart to do. And then, uh, when you wake up in the morning, you, you get the text from the trainer or a call from the trainer as far as uh, what we have available and who's ready to go. Thank you. Yep. Next question comes from Craig Ross from the Michigan Insider. Uh, Coach, I wonder if you've been able to have anything that's an actual coherent practice or you've been limited to sort of a couple of players doing one thing and a couple maybe doing something else. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we've had, you know, very unorthodox practices as of late. Um, we haven't been able to have, you know, uh, you know, 10 players uh, to practice in the last uh, week or so. But, you know, we've always, you know, been able to figure out as far as how we can, the, those who are available to practice, you know, what can we do to get them better and also get them ready. Um, but, you know, this is the, you know, the challenging times that, you know, we all are dealing with. And, you know, some programs have dealt with it. Uh, we're not the first. Um, unfortunately, when, when it's you, uh, then you get a chance to see like how challenging it really is. Um, but yes, you know, the, it's frustrating when you don't have all your guys. Uh, and when you do have all your players out there, we all at times take it for granted. <laughs> but until, you know, you experience a COVID uh, you know, situation and you have to go through, you know, the COVID protocols with, you know, guys being out, uh, you just embrace the suck and roll up your sl sleeves and, Figure, you know, just do your best. Thank you. Next up is Alejandro from also from the Michigan Insider. Uh, Juwan, with with the benefit now of hindsight, uh, do you have any thoughts on how the the Big Ten regular season played out last year with the Illinois Michigan controversy, and uh, given kind of the backlash that stemmed even from from their athletic department, does that play into any extra motivation for you and the team this season? Um, you know, last year is the past. So I, I always, if you get to know me, I, I look at moving forward in life. And uh, with that, uh, this is a new season. And, you know, you see the challenges that we all are dealing with this year. I think Illinois had some problems with their program with COVID. So uh, we're looking forward to playing the game tomorrow. And uh, we're happy that we get the opportunity to go out there and compete. And I'm so proud of our guys, the way how they've handled this situation. Next up, we'll go back to uh, Andrew from MLive. John, I've heard some kind of talk nationally about maybe changes to the redshirt rule to allow guys to, to play, to make sure you have a, you know, a, a roster um, without losing the redshirt. Um, I guess, do you have any thoughts on that? Can you share anything about any current guys on the roster that you were, were or are considering 
read well yet. i haven't read anything about it i um i've heard you know from one of my assistants that you know, I, I believe uh there are two conferences that I threw the idea out there to uh, and you know if to my knowledge it wasn't anyone from the power five conferences which is one obviously the big 10 which is the conference that we compete in um until that information is put out there then i'll get into it and read it but as of right now you know i i don't you know i can't comment on something that right now that's not even you know been a, put on the table sure all right thanks next up is clayton safety from the wolverine yeah, coach, uh, just wondering your impressions of Illinois on film, what stands out and what kind of challenge you feel like they're going to be uh, tomorrow night? Uh, Illinois, is, uh, you know, they are a very well coached team that plays extremely hard on both ends of the floor. Um, they're physical. Um, they, they, they do a, a tremendous job in, you know, playing inside out. Uh, Coffee, obviously, we know, uh, you know, one of the big uh, imposing forces in the inside. Uh, with his strength, his toughness, his skill level, um, their team is you know patient enough, and uh, they, they they run a lot of their offensive sets that goes through him first. Um, they also have shooting on the floor on at all four positions, um, and I, I'm speaking of shooting where three point shooting. You know, Frazier obviously is the one, and as well as Plummer, who's they all both of those guys shoot the ball extremely well from the outside. But then you you got to add on Grandison and uh, Williams, who's and Williams, in my opinion, is uh, the glue guy to the team. Uh, he's been there for a while. He's, you know, he's a two way player. Uh, he makes when he plays. Uh, he plays extremely solid. Um, you know, you can tell this guy uh, really knows how and has a great feel for the game. But then they also have you know good you know, bench play from their guys that comes off the bench who. You know, Luke Good, who shoots the ball pretty good. And um, Hawkins brings them great energy and shooting. Um, and then, you know, you you never know what Cabello. I treat it like Cabello, like he's playing. And he's one of the premier guards, you know, in the country who, as last season, as I remember, when we played him here at Michigan, you know, you know we had a tough time, you know, guarding him in ball screens. We had a tough time guarding him in – you know, off the press, uh, when, we, when we did press and, you know, he got in the paint, he, he was able to create a lot of scoring opportunities for himself and others. So, you know, they're one of the top teams in this league. Coach, we'll move over to Austin Meek from The Athletic. Hey, Juwan, uh, what's your level of optimism right now that you'll be able to uh, reschedule these last two games that you weren't able to play? Um, and without those games on the schedule right now, does, does that increase the urgency to take advantage of the opportunities for, for some marquee wins when those are out there? Um, well, I would say this, um, we are going to play those games and we're looking forward to playing it. And uh, I don't know when it's going to happen, uh, but you know, the big 10 and, you know, our, our ADs will all get together and we'll figure it out like how we did last year. Next up is Zach Shaw from Michigan Insider. Hey, Giovanna, I'm curious what you've seen from your players and maybe your, your leaders on the team during this. I mean, you guys have played, I think, three games in about five weeks and now you're training, you can't even practice in full. I guess, how hard is it to stay locked in and how have they done in terms of keeping the team locked in? Well, it's been great, you know, having not just leadership from, you know, Eli, but, you know, from every guy has to get credit for it. Every guy that has been available to practice and participate on, you know, finding solutions, on, you know, to help, you know, us, you know, become a better you know, team and uh, correct some of the, you know, the correctables and control what we can control. And um, I, I love how the mindset has been, the attitude, the positivity, uh, throughout the, the entire team, as well as the staff. And, you know, it's remarkable just to be around a group that, you know, not making excuses or uh, crying out for, you know, uh, a petty party or anything like that. You know, we're rolling up our sleeves and staying together and staying locked in on, you know, the big picture. 